The following is a special presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and future, and brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today at Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. And welcome to the 1949 Baseball Replay Preview Show, where we go through some of the stats and stories of the season that you and I are about to enjoy together. If all goes according to plan, the replay will start Wednesday at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on Twitch. It's a double header day, not a triple header day as I originally thought. It's a double header day. We'll feature the Philadelphia Phillies and Boston Braves from Braves Field in downtown Boston, now Nickerson Field on the campus of Boston University. Then in prime time, we will play the Cleveland Indians and the St. Louis Browns from Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. Boston and Cleveland being the pennant-winning teams from 1948, and as a courtesy, no matter what their records were the next year, they always get the first games of a season replay. All right, so before we get into the stats part of it, let's tell you a little bit different. If you are just not familiar with pre-1960s baseball, which I'm sure a lot of you are, but just in case, well, I don't know what the hell that's doing. Uh, in case you aren't, then let's go through some of the rules. There's no DH in the American League. There's no DH in the National League. The pitchers are going to hit. It is a 154-game season, not a 162-game season. 1949, in particular, featured a boatload. I'll show you in a few minutes, but I'm talking a boatload of walks and not a lot of steals. Not a ton of home runs, unless your name is Ralph Kiner, but much more of a modified small ball game. Yes, pitchers did go more complete games, but it wasn't everybody all the time. So that's what we got going on for you. If the game is released on the 22nd, as we expect, unboxing video live on twitch.tv slash retro sports network at 7 Eastern time or so. And we'll play a game and go through the changes. And then the season would start Wednesday the 23rd with the Braves at noon and the Indians at 8. If the season game gets released on the 23rd, we'll go with the unboxing video on the 23rd. And opening day will be Saturday the 26th on Boxing Day. And we'll just run those games back to back at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. It all depends on whether the game goes off on schedule. All right, before we get to the the Dog and Pony show, three games a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, live at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. on twitch.tv slash retro sports network. And the Wednesday game will probably be in prime time at 8 Eastern on retro sports network on twitch.tv with uploads the next day on YouTube. So three games a week. I think we're doing four the first week. It's a special week. I actually have the a tentative map sketched out through Memorial Day, the first six weeks of the season. It actually starts April 18th. So with that, you've seen enough of my face. Let's get to the preview. And so first, let's take a look at the real-life final standings in both leagues. It's a two-team race in the National League, and it really is only a two-team race. The Phillies, who would tangle with the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1950, aren't there yet. They're close, but it's going to be hard to see how they make up a 16-game deficit. Brooklyn won the National League 97-57. and 57. They won the National League in 47, and of course would win in 50, 52, 53, 55 when they won the whole gosh darn thing, and 56 before they moved to Los Angeles. St. Louis, who would win it in the World Series in 46, right their last year of contending, one game out of first place. You're going to see a lot of St. Louis games. You're going to see a lot of Brooklyn games because those are the two of the three teams in the National League that were 500. Philadelphia, again, 
50 is their year. 49, you know, they went 85, 86. I don't think they have a shot, but they're there. Not a good year for the Boston Braves. They went from winning the National League in 48 to, well, they were in Milwaukee by 1953. They went 75 and 79 in 49. The Giants finished 73 and 81, 24 games out of first place. The Pirates, 71 and 83. It's all about Ralph Kiner for them. Cincinnati, 62 and 92. And the Cubbies, 61 and 93. So, although you will see Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and Chicago in places, we really will focus on the teams that have a chance. And it's most likely Brooklyn and St. Louis. Batting leaders. Jackie Robinson won the batting title. He had 342 in real life. Had 38 doubles, 12 triples, and 16 homers. Stan Musial, who you'll see a lot of, hit 338 and 36 homers. That was good enough for second in the National League. And his 123 RBI was good for third. He walked 107 times and struck out 38. Enos Slaughter. For the Cardinals, was third in the batting race at 336. Carl Ferrillo, the outfielder for the Brooklyn Dodgers, hit 322. Ralph Kiner, today he'd be the MVP winner, 310, 54 homers, 127 RBI, and an OPS of 1089. So we expect a lot of good things from Ralph. He only struck out 61 times. Big Clue was one of our big fans. Ted Klazuski hit 309 for the Reds and only hit eight home runs in 136 games. Bobby Thompson hit seventh, or had the seventh best average at 309. He, of course, his big year would be 51, but he still drove in 109 and hit 27 homers. Willard Marshall for the Giants, that's NY1, 307, 12 homers and 70 RBI. Del Enos. For the Phillies, 302, 25 homers and drove in 110. And Whitey Lockman for the Giants hit 301, 11 homers and 65 RBI. I uh, believe all the other names you've seen. So Jackie Robinson, second in the NL in RBI and third in OPS and certainly led the league in stolen bases with 37. Pitching, Dave Coslow. Had the best ERA. He went 11 and 14, 23 starts, 15 complete games, and as was somewhat the practice, you went and closed out games too. Saves were not official at 1949. Jerry Staley was the lowest ERA for the Cardinals out of the bullpen, 17 starts but 45 appearances. He went 10 and 10. Howie Pollitt, who was also their big ace in 46, a 20-game winner. 39 games, but only started 28. Preacher Rowe of the Brooklyn Dodgers, their ace, 2.79 ERA, 15 and 6 on the year. Ken Heinzelman of the Phillies, a little bit before Robin Roberts, 3.02 ERA, 17 and 10 through 250 innings. Of course, the big name for the Boston Braves, Warren Spahn, 21 and 14, did not get used out of the pen and finished 25 of his 38 starts for 302 in the third innings. Russ Meyer for the Phillies, also pretty big in the rotation, 17-8 and eight with a 308 ERA. Don Newcomb, first of his really big years, 17-8 and eight with a 317 ERA. Al Brazil of the Cardinals, 14-8, and eight, was ninth in the ERA with a 318. And Murray Dixon of the Pirates, 329, but he went 12 and 14. Half of his games were out of the pen. So Spawn, Harry Pollitt, and Ken Raffensberger of the Reds were the top three in wins at 21, 20, and 18. Saves Jim Constanty. Be curious to see how the computer handles him. He was Philadelphia's relief ace, fireman, if you will, through a lot of innings, but didn't qualify for the ERA title or didn't finish in the top 10. And what a difference 71 years ago makes. Warren Spahn won the strikeout run title with 151 in 302 innings. Big Don Newcomb for the Dodgers was second, and Jansen for the Giants was third with 113. They pitched to contact.
American League leaders, and by the way, this is the current version of the game, not the new one. George Kell for the Tigers hit 343 in 134 games. I'm sure that cheesed off Ted Williams. Ted Williams was second in 155 games, hit 43 homers and 159 RBI. Triple crown year for Ted, kind of, maybe? We'll see. His on-base percentage was 490. He walked 162 times and struck out just 48. Bob Dillinger from the St. Louis Browns hit 324. That was third in the American League. Dale Mitchell, who would later become the 27th out, and Don Larson's perfect game in the 56 or 56 series. Yep, that's right. Hit 317 for Cleveland and 23 triples. Bobby Dore for the Boston Red Sox, number four, hit fifth for th with 309, 18 homers, and drove in 109. Cass Michaels of the no hit Chicago White Sox hit 308, nine triples. Comiskey was a big part. He walked 101 times. Don DiMaggio was 7th in the American League. He hit 307. 8 homers and 60 RBI. Johnny Pesky, all the, the 3 from the teammates, was 8th at 306. 2 homers and 69 RBI. Roy Seavers of the Browns hit 306. And Vic Wirtz of the Tigers hit 304 and, and was 10th. Wirtz, by the way, Supplied Willie Mays with that fly ball in Game 1 of the 54 series. Yankees, of course, won the American League, 97-57, and 57, by one game over the Boston Red Sox. You're going to see a lot of the Yankees and a lot of the Red Sox. Cleveland coming off their World Series win in 48. We're okay. They were 8 back, 89-65. and 65. The Tigers still a good team in the late 40s, 87-67, and 67, 10 back. The Philadelphia Athletics and Connie Mack in his 49th year as a manager, 81 and 73, 16 back. The White Sox, 63 and 91. The Browns, 53 and 101. And the Washington Nationals or Senators, first in war, first in peace, and last in the American League, finished 47 games at, behind the Yankees at 50 and 104. Home runs, it just wasn't a big part of the game then. Ted Williams, 43, led the American League. Vern Stevens hit 39 for Boston and drove in 159. And then Graham for the Browns is third at 24. Teddy Williams and Vern Stevens, 1 and 2, in the, or tied for RBI with 159. And Wirtz drove in 133. OPS, Williams, 1-1. Four, one. That's what happens when you have an on-base percentage of 490 and a slugging percentage of 650. Tommy Heinrich of the Yankees hit 942, and Stevens of the Sox, the Red Sox at 930. ERA leaders again. Mike Garcia out of the pen for the Indians. Only started half of the games he appeared in. A 236. That's probably a pretty wide margin. 14 and 5. Mel Parnell, one of the big reasons the Red Sox contended in 49, a 25-game winner that led the American League, a 2.77 ERA, and he finished 27 of his 33 starts. Virgil Trucks of the Tigers, 19 and 11, 2.81 ERA, good for third. Fred Hutchinson, who would later become a manager for the Tigers, a 2.96 ERA, 15 and 7 on the year. 21 starts in 33 games. Bob Lemon, who would become a great manager in his own right, 22-game winner for the Indians, 2.99 ERA, lost 10 games and completed 22 of his 33 starts. Eddie Lopat, the Yankees ace, 3.26 ERA, 15 and 10. Bill White, W I G H T, for the Shy Sox, 15 and 13 with a 3.31 ERA. Vic Rashi, a 3.34 ERA, 21 and 10. He completed 21 of his 37 games in 274 and two thirds innings. He allowed 247 hits, but he walked 138 while striking out 124. My goodness. 
Bob Lemon walked 137 and struck out 138. Mel Parnell walked 134 and struck out 122. Mm -hmm. Ellis Kinder, or Kinder, for the so Red Sox went 23 and 6 with a 3.36 ERA. And Hal Newhauser, Newhauser, a gem of a pitcher in that era, a 3.36 ERA, 18 and 11. Parnell, 125, that led the American League. Kinder, 23, and Lemon, 122. Johnny Page was a first real big reliever in the American League, and he saved 27 games. Benton from Cleveland saved 10, and Farrick for St. Louis, well, there's only one 53, he saved 6. And strikeouts again in the American League, not a big deal. Virgil Trucks with a strikeout crown of 153, 275 innings. Newhauser, 144, and Bob Lemon struck out 138 in 279 and two thirds innings. That's not what I wanted. And just in case you're wondering about what real life numbers they put up, well, Brooklyn stole 116 bases, but that pretty much was it. The Cardinals led the major or the National League with a 277 batting average. But as a team, they hit 102 homers. The Giants could hit. They hit 260 along with Cincinnati. Pittsburgh with Ralph Kiner, they slugged 126 homers and hit 259. The Braves 258, the Cubs 256 and the Phillies 254. So we'll leave those up on the screen for just a second. The National League walked 4,397 times and struck out 4,561, which is, I think, what the Astros did last year in 60 games. Pitching, the league ERA of 404. The Cardinals had the ERA of 345. Brooklyn, 380. The Giants, 382. And last would be the Pirates at 457. About half the games were complete. The Giants and Braves finished 68 of their 154 starts, while the Cardinals and Dodgers finished 64 and 62, respectively. The Reds, or Red Legs, walked 640 batters in 1949. And how many home runs? Just 934 for the eight teams. For 89 shutouts and 106 unofficial saves. Fielding, you're going to lose sleep if you don't look at this. 975, the fielding percentage. Brooklyn only committed 125 errors. Pittsburgh was second, Cincinnati third, St. Louis fourth with 146 errors. The Phillies, Giants, and Cubs were not all that slick fielding. The Cubs committed 187 errors. The Phillies. Giants and Cubs all committed an average of more than one error per game. In the American League, we'll start with the fielding. And Cleveland and Boston were pretty good. Cleveland had a fielding percentage of 983. Boston, 980. St. Louis and Washington, oh boy, that's ugly. 972. Again, they averaged more than one error per game in 165 and 162, respectively. Pitching. The American League pitchers walked 5,628 batters. The A's walked 759, and the Washington Ball Club, Senators or Nats, walked 779, but the Yankees walked 812 batters. 812. Complete games. More usage of the bullpens, of course, Washington and St. Louis were just bad. So less than half the games were complete. Detroit completed 70, Boston 84, and Philly 85. Keep that in mind as we go through. Detroit threw 18 shutouts, the Red Sox 16. Cleveland's ERA, 336 pitching, did the job for them. The Yankees second at 369, the Red Sox fourth at 397. St. Louis, 5 21 and their batting average allowed of 
four. Batting wise, there was only 769 home runs hit. The Red Sox led the American League with 131. The White Sox, as a team, hit 43. And nobody really stole any bases. 366 for the league, with the Sky Sox stealing a league high 60. The Yankees, 58. The Browns were so bad stealing bases, they stolen base percentage was less than half at 49.4. And the Tigers were thrown out 52 times and stole 39. Batting average-wise, the Boston Red Sox hit 282. They could mash 271 doubles. The Yankees hit 269. The Tigers, 267. Philly and Cleveland, again, all teams above 500, hit 260. Chicago, 257. St. Louis and Washington hit 254. There was half as many triples as there was. Homers. And so that is how these teams should play. And so a reminder, Philadelphia and Boston, because it's the NL opener for not the Reds. I'm surprised. That is the first game of our doubleheader whenever opening day is. Again, we're projecting it to be Wednesday the 23rd. And the we go to St. Louis for the other for the nightcap, their opener, Cleveland's opener, as they win the World Series, or have they won the World Series. Other games in week one, we're going to look at Brooklyn and Philadelphia from Shy Park. That would be game three of the week. And Saturday will be the Yankees and the Red Sox from Fenway Park. In Boston, So you'll see eight teams the first week of the season in four games. And again, just like we normally do for most of our replays, we'll do one Wednesday game, one Friday game, and one Saturday game. So that's the opening week. I'm Ron Juckett. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to this replay so much. Baseball's coming, gang. Enjoy. We'll talk to you the next time.